Okay, so now let's have a look at parts and placeholders within the Moodle formula question type. Okay, so let's start with partial points. What you're seeing on screen right now is question text that indicates there's going to be two parts to this question. There's a part A and then there's a part B. And so what I can do is I can control how many points each of those parts is worth. So through the parts mark category, you can see I can assign a point value to the given parts. So for example, in our question, if we want part A to be worth one point and part B to be worth three points, then we can control that through the parts mark field. What that does is it makes part A worth more or less than part B. Notice that this has nothing to do with the holistic question when it's added to a Moodle quiz, which you're going to do later. What this is for is really just as a reference to other parts within the same question. You'll control the holistic point value for the entire question when you go to add it to the Moodle quiz later. Okay, now let's look at placeholders. What placeholders are used for is to control where you want the student response area to go within the question text. So for placeholders, there's some syntax that you need to keep in mind. The syntax is starting with a hashtag and then have a, a single word or single phrase with no spaces as your placeholder name. So in this example, I'm using hashtag part A as my placeholder. Now notice up in the question text, if I encase that hashtag part A with curly brackets, then that's going to place the response area for part one in that particular part of the question. Okay, so let's have a look at that now in a short demo. Okay, so here we are within our Moodle question bank. We'll create new question, select formulas, add that. Our question name, we're gonna name this question delete dash parts. We're not gonna use any variables because we're gonna focus in on how the parts work to a given question. For our main question, what we're gonna do is use part A write the number 5.26 below, and write the number 7.78 in the box below. Okay, so there's some nice question text. What we now have is really a two-part question that we're seeking to build here. So I go to the bottom where it says part one, and I key in my answer. My answer to the first part was 5.26. I want that to be a number with absolute error of zero. And there we go. I need another part, so I'm gonna go blank for two more parts. And then in part two, I'm gonna have an answer, of course, in part two of 7.78, with absolute error of zero. So there we go. Now, when I go to save this, and I preview it, we have our two-part question with two answer boxes. In the first answer box, the student writes 5.26. In the second answer box, the student writes 7.78. We check it, and it's working. Now it would be ideal for us to actually place these answer boxes strategically in a particular portion of the question. So it'd be nice if this answer box was directly under A and this answer box was directly under B. So let's show you how to do that. To do that, we're gonna to need to utilize something called placeholders. So I'm gonna open up part one, and I'm gonna use a placeholder name and my placeholder name is going to be hashtag part A. So it has to be one word, and the precursor has to be a hashtag for the syntax for your placeholder name. I'm gonna to go to part two, and I'm gonna use the placeholder name there of hashtag part B. And there we go. Now I'm gonna go up to my question text, and I'm gonna tell Moodle that this is where I want my placeholder put. And here, is where I want my second placeholder. So what that's going to do is place an answer box here that references part A and the answer for part A, and an answer box here that references part two or part B of the question here. Scroll to the bottom, I save that, and then preview, and you can see the answer boxes now are nicely positioned exactly where I want them in the question. Okay, so now let's dive in a little bit deeper to this and another added piece of functionality. Let's suppose now we wanna add in yet another part to this question. We'll call it part C. So part C says given the number four, something. So potentially maybe what I want students to do is have two subparts to part C. 
Maybe subpart one and subpart two or something to that effect. Maybe subpart one is gonna ask students to add one to the number four. And subpart two is gonna ask them to maybe double the number four. Okay, so to do this, I need to have a third part to the question. So I open part two, blanks for more parts. And for part three now, again, for my answers, I want them to be numbers. And I want that first number or answer to be five because I want students to add one to the number four. And my second answer, I want to be eight because I want students to double the number four. Notice I've used square brackets here because I'm telling Moodle there's an array of answers. The first answer is five and the second answer is eight. I need students to respond to this with absolute error of zero. There we go. There's our answer. I need to use my placeholder name that I already put into my question text. Of course, that was hashtag part C, right? So what that means is basically these answer boxes are gonna be placed into my question text where I utilize the placeholder. But I haven't really specified the question. I certainly could do that up here. You know, I could say, for example, part one, add one to the number. But remember what's gonna end up happening is there's gonna be two answer boxes, right? Because it's an array. There's an answer of five and there's an answer of eight. And I can't really control that nicely here. So I'm gonna show you another way to do this. I'm gonna leave that sort of generic there as part C. I go down to part three. And here where it says parts text, this is gonna allow me to build some entire context that I'm gonna be able to put into where the placeholder is. So in that parts text, I'm gonna use part one add one to the number, and part two, double the number. Now, when we look at this very closely, you'll notice I'm using this weird syntax here, this underscore zero. What this underscore zero is doing is it's saying, this is where the students expected to answer the question for the first item in the array. So the array had five as the first item and eight as the second item. Remember, an array start with an index of zero. So we're saying the first item, they're gonna be expected to answer five here. And the second item, they're gonna be expected to answer eight here. And so what's gonna end up happening is these are basically placeholders for the various answers that the student's going to need to enter from this array. So the whole thing, this whole question text, is gonna take the place of the placeholder up above. So that whole question text is going to formulate part C up here. So let's have a look. We preview that. And we have a nicely formatted question. Write the number 5.26 below. Write the number 7.78 below. Given the number 4, add 1 to your number. It would be 5. Double your number would be 8. And we can check that. And there we go. Now, because of the fact that we can ask multi-part questions without having to utilize parts text, a lot of people do ask, they're like, what is the point of this overcomplicated parts text? Well, one of the reasons you might want to use parts text is you might want to format your parts text in a very particular way using very particular HTML code. Well, that'll allow you to format your parts text here using very particular HTML code and control that. Whereas you can control your question text above using HTML code, but you can't dive in to a very particular part and then inject HTML code there. The only way to do that is to make sure that you're utilizing parts text in that component. Okay, so this concludes our video on parts.